Always do better. I'm gonna keep trying if you guys keep trying. Let's keep rocking and rolling, man. Welcome everyone to Indie 3 is the final day. It is dawn of the final day of our Indie Showcase and all of uh, our wonderful panel programming that we've had all week. Um, to start us off, I want to just start off real quick since we're just a little bit behind schedule. Uh, excuse me. Um, oh. Yeah? Oh, Something I've just... Technical difficulty. Never mind. Pew. Okay. All our, all our sound and audio equipment is, is working perfectly. Good. Uh, so I want to. We had a uh, we had a uh, indie game that we showed off yesterday that was really really cool, and we didn't have as much information as uh, I would have liked. And so, uh, if you remember the game Mystery Box that we showed yesterday, we just showed the dev blog, and it was very mysterious. It was a box of mystery, and so uh, we grabbed Graham, uh, the lead on that project to help tell us more about it. And he was able to provide us with some uh, new art assets and uh, mock-ups that he was putting together. And uh, so this is stuff that uh, has never been seen before. And he is going to help talk more about uh, Mystery Box. And so I'm very, very excited to introduce Graham of Mystery Box. All right, here we go. Welcome to Indie 3, Graham. Hello. Hello. So. What I've got here on pulled up on the monitor is uh, a a series of uh, graphic designs that you guys have made about Mystery Box. Can you d explain what Mystery Box is for everyone? All right, um, Mystery Box is a game that we've been working on for for a little over a month now. We've got a team of six people, eight people on, it, including myself. And what it is is it's a experiment in gender politics to an extent. Uh, what it, it's a dating sim with elements of a lot of different things that is that takes place in a culture within our own world that another country that through tradition and seldomly is it, is it questioned they have no gender they have a gender but they don't have a gender role assigned to them they all hide their appearance mm -hmm. and so um, actually, if you could do me a yeah. fa do me a favor, if you could put on the ba put on the uh, Imgur album, the second image. That's exactly what I was. I thought you had in mind. Hit me, James. Mmm, there it is. Uh, that that right there, I, I that right there is one of the characters from from the game uh, named Izzy. Uh, and that is sort of an example for you of how we are going about covering their appearances. Is that their names and their specific whatever about them about themselves is uh, summed up sort of within an animal, and so in this case we have Izzy, whose last name is Claris, which is uh, Phidippus Claris is a certain species of jumping spider, um, and so their mask is very very much designed based off of that off of that itself. Um, that said, of course, but it, it, of course, this is a culture that's very repressed, all that kind of th thing, and so there's kind of a double-edged sword to everything that's going on. Mm hmm Um, and so and so it, while while they are, you know, they don't have to deal with, you know, gender politics, all of that kind of thing. They instead have to deal with a large amount of problems within their own culture of, well, fear, sexual repression, and no no real ability to express themselves outwardly. So, like a political repression and uh, uh, like class based repressions and stuff. Yeah, like it, all those kinds of things. But it's mainly it, it, but it's mainly the uh, a severe sexual oh a sexual repression, repression especially. Gotcha. Yeah, because they because of course they they can't show their appear their appearances, and so in order to have any kind have any kind of sexual relations, they 
have to first reveal themselves, and revealing themselves is a huge deal. Wow. Uh, it's only really done among family members and uh, and lovers. So you're working on building a, a universe based on a very specific uh, culture or acculturation that you're you're working with. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we're calling the country. We're 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 setting it in a country within like modern Earth. Um, that we're making that we're essentially making up called Solus, uh, which is somewhere near Italy. Um, and that and essentially that that culture, while it has like communicated, like if you could go to the fourth image, mm -hmm. real quick. Uh, th that fourth image there is of a character named Gwyn, and as I think you can kind of tell, Gwyn is not wearing any kind of mask. Mm -hmm. um, Gwyn is it, Gwyn is a character that is an immigrant, and immigrants are not forced into adapting to the culture. Um, and Gwyn is, to a great extent, one of the characters that we are going to be uh, you, it, that we are going to be focusing on a lot to get across, to kind of ask the main question of the whole game which is what is gender and if it and is it a, important if it is why and uh Gwyn has that that question pretty much constantly because she is she's been raised in this culture where nothing where gender is not really a thing but she knows that she's female and she doesn't know what that really means. Uh, and, or if it means anything. So there's a lot of social politics going on within this game. And they're, they kind of sound like they layer themselves in a really uh, almost majestic way uh, within the form of the dating sim. Or within the form of the graphic novel, especially. Yes, uh, and that's something that I should, I should touch on really quickly. Uh, the, the dating sim aspect is essentially that the game has the objective of a dating sim, which is to find character you like, get with character, all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that I found that to a great extent, dating it like I had to play a bunch of dating sims while I was doing the initial work on this, and a lot of them have this kind of weird tendency to. For one thing, make it so that it's very one-sided. That it's essentially you are pursuing them until they give you the thing you want. Mm -hmm. And not only that, also that it's pretty much you just have to be a really nice guy and eventually it'll all work out for you. Reality isn't like that. Uh, so we'll have it. So we'll have some areas of it. Like uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to spoil anything. But there are areas in it where you'll get into an argument and. The the solution to the argument isn't to just like be nice to them and sort of and sort of just let it go. The solution, the actual like good good answer, quote unquote, is to stand up for yourself because having a one sided relationship is not the way to go about it. I actually can second that in dating sims as a as a thing. Is whenever I try to stand up for myself as a main character and for my rights, uh, I usually get shut down in some way by the uh, the game and i i kind of have, am resorted to some kind of worse ending yeah so it sounds yeah. like you guys have a really cool team put together too for this yeah uh we, uh well there there's me and there's uh and there's Ka Catherine who are mainly doing most of the work on like the creative design of the game um and then there's, and then we have a, we have our programmer John, and uh, this work that you're seeing on here is all from uh, is all from Austin. But one of the things that I do do want to do want to note here is that we have two composers, uh, two really? musical composers, and uh, that is because um, due to the fact that characters, you know, have their face covered uh, for the most part, they don't have their mouth covered, but they have everything else covered. Um, they kind of don't get the chance as much to emote and make themselves stand out. And so one of the ways that we're characterizing them is to give them each an individual theme. And since there are so many characters in this, uh, I needed we needed two composers for that. Wow, that's cool.
that's gonna be that's gonna be very exciting to work with. <laughs> Music is a huge part of uh, dating sim games, and I think a very underappreciated part of it too. Yep. Um. So what, I also. Oh, nope, go, uh, ahead. go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about the uh, interrupting. Um, what can when can we what can we be expecting from development and from uh where can we get more details about development as it progresses? Um, we have a, a development blog uh at uh, mysterybox dev .com, and we also will be posting everything that we have for this uh as we as we make it on a Twitter page, um at uh, mysterybox.dev on Twitter. Very cool. I interrupted you, though. You were saying one more thing? Uh, I also want to quickly note the gameplay of the, th of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. I've been so excited about listening to your universe that I totally... There's also more yeah. game going on. Uh, well, it, another thing I noticed while I was playing a lot of dating sims was that they're all pretty much a series of dialogue trees. Not all of them, of course. You have your outliers of every genre, but, but they're... they're for the most part, a series of dialogue trees, and I'm a player who is very easily bored. Um, and as such, I've added it. We've we've added in a whole a, a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of uh, unique little unique little systems. One of them, the primary one, being the memory system. I'm a big fan of the Phoenix Wright series, and oh, uh, yes, and. Uh, in that game, you collect evidence as you go through the game, uh, but instead of evidence, because that doesn't make any sense uh, in this context, uh, we are instead kind of collecting memories. As you go through the game, memories will be added into kind of a menu, and then at certain points throughout the, uh, throughout the game, you'll have to br bring up old memories to remind people of things and, and so forth. For example, where do you want to go for dinner? You bring up the memory menu. If I find a memory of a of another in-game event where you went to a really good restaurant, it, it bring it up, and your character will say, "I went to this place a, day, a while ago. Their tacos were fantastic," and the scene would progress from there. Um, but the other the other things about the other thing is is that uh, each is that I wanted there to be you know a little bit more than just that. And so there are also going to be a lot of different little mini games, um, for uh, for it. Uh, for yeah, example, it, uh, explain like, some of those mini games. That sounds cool. That was part of the part uh, well, that I saw yesterday that really uh, got me excited too. Yeah, like I, I, I put I, we're putting together a kind of a full DDR like like dance thing. Um, for one, for uh, specific bits of it, um, and. Also, there will be like you know your standard your puzzles along the way in order to in order to figure out certain things. Like Izzy, for example, is a character that has a bit of an an obsession with using puzzles as a method of communication. Izzy's a bit of an oddball, which kind of can be summed up by their mask. Um, and uh, another one that I that I was just starting work on earlier today was uh, it was in order to simulate a mosh pit. Uh, to have kind of a game that's like a little mini game that's like a combination of asteroids and pinball, mm -hmm. uh, where the objective, where essentially in order to get points and all that kind of stuff, you essentially have to go from one it, it, from it, you you essentially have to ram into as many things as possible. Oh my gosh! It, which, <laughs> which which is essentially how it works in a mosh pit. <laughs> oh wow, that's clever. Uh, and so essentially, it's asteroids in reverse. It is asteroids in reverse. Oh, that is funny. It's a good way of thinking about it. Well, awesome. I'm really glad that we were able to uh, see all of this exclusive stuff uh, that you haven't shown anyone before, and it looks amazing. Like, I'm really, really excited. The more I hear about Mystery Box, the more excited I get, because you have this such a dynamic universe that you're working with, and all of the, uh, all the people that you have working on it and all of the places that you are taking it are so uh, contemporary and exciting and uh, are way cool. I'm a huge fan of dating sims and a huge fan of graphic novels, and I've tried to make that clear all of, over all of Indie 3 because we've had so many great submissions about those. And uh, Mystery Box is just right there with that. Yep, that that, that was... that. Uh, 
that was the general obje objective with the whole thing was that it was that es essentially we've been questioning for eternities now within the, within the gaming industry itself mm -hmm. uh, what is gender what does it mean does it, 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 it uh you know this whole ubisoft thing whatever um but uh but, but and so we've been we, we decided to take a bit of a different angle on the whole thing all right well uh, uh We've got uh, one question yeah. from the chat. Uh, where can we currently see the Mystery Box dev blog so that we can follow the progress in your game? Uh, I have it right here. It's at, uh, it, uh, I will post it in the chat real quick. Uh, awesome. Excellent. Uh, uh, mysteryboxdev.tumblr.com. I also want to put out really quickly um, that we are currently on the lookout for a female writer. Uh, because I'm a straight white guy, and I can't read all of this myself. Mm -hmm. um, and we are also on the lookout for a background artist. Um, and very soon we'll also be looking around for a uh, for voice actors. Oh, cool. Uh, again, due to lack of characterization because of the masks. So yes. Um, I know that we've had. Uh... I know what was it? the people who brought up Exogenesis were actually the voice actors of the game. Um, they are Shinxie Paps on Twitter. Uh, no, Peter Gerkman, VA was the title. I can talk about more of that. Um, but uh, so you need a non-male writer and a background artist. Yes. And yes. The calls out there. Wow. That's awesome. And actually, I do want to do want to specify a female writer. We already have a non-male writer. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks for clarifying that, because that can help everyone else, too. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here and being a part of it. I think that uh, especially this level of work is something that is very representative of Indie 3, and what we try to do here is that no matter what level uh, your game is at in completion, that we can create a space for it. Yeah, and thanks, uh, thanks for having me, and thanks for show, uh, showing all of this off. It's been a nice time. Oh, I'm I'm so glad. Thank you so much for being here, man. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very glad My to pleasure. hear that. My pleasure. All right, so from here, uh, I'm going to go get a whole bunch of trailers set up for you, and we have Tess Young in the green room right now, and her and I are going to rock out a whole bunch of trailers for you. So sit tight. Fantastic. We will take a very short break while we queue up for the next round of Indie Showcase. And then we'll be back. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> 